Of Plastic and Men, a short story by M. H. Gabry. My name is Benjamin, and I like sports. Well, maybe not as much as I used to. Grandpa came out of the bush one summer to stay with us. It was just before the 1976 Olympics took place in Montreal. We had a chat back then that got me thinking. It set me thinking, to use Grandpa's expression. I like to relate the chat in the third person because I like to watch it unfold from afar. Just as if I were observing a wise old man trying to talk sense to a dreamy-eyed boy. Anyway, the chat went like this. There goes Ronnie the Rabbit again, Grandpa. He's going to be in the Olympics next year, they say. He can run around these 160 acres in no time. Did it twice already today. Isn't he great? What an athlete. Ronnie the Rabbit, eh, said the old man to 16-year-old Benjamin. Bet you Ab Nelson could catch him, if old Ab were still alive and in his prime, that is. As a matter of fact, Ab used to catch rabbits for a living. Ab, is that short for Abner, asked Benjamin. No, no, Ben, said his grandfather with a chuckle. Ab is short for abs. You see, in the old days, at least where me and Ab came from, if a man had real raw power in his gut, they said he had a pretty good ab. My trapper buddy had such a solid ab from running the trap line like he did that everyone just called him Ab. Not that anybody ever saw Ab's belly. Ab was much too shy to show it. The thing is, back then you were judged to have a good ab by what you could do, not by what your ab looked like. And if anybody tried to get a good ab just by playing with barbells, then he was accused of having a plastic ab. You know, an ab too prone for bagging out under the strain of genuine labor. But plastic wasn't even around back then, Benjamin said defiantly, anxious to defend Ronnie the Rabbit in the Olympics. And so, he continued, how can your story even be true? Now Ben came the reply. The word plastic was around way before any true plastic substance was made. The word was adopted to identify synthetic plastics just because the word plastic already meant anything that is capable of being molded. Why, just check my Laird and Lee's Webster's Dictionary, edition 1929. Look up the word plastic and you'll find it in there. All right, said Ben, his attitude softening up. So you say that Ab could beat Ronnie in a run. But just because Ab used to catch rabbits, that doesn't mean he could beat Ronnie the human rabbit. Listen, Ben answered his grandfather shrewdly. I never said that Ab could beat Ronnie the rabbit. I only said, I bet you he could catch him. But just suppose Ab Nelson the trapper and Ronnie the human rabbit actually ran a race. And suppose that Ronnie proved to be the only rabbit that Ab Nelson couldn't catch. Well, no matter, because the man who runs to put meat on the table is still greater than the man who runs for glory. And the man who's too shy to show his athletic looks is still greater than the man who shows his off. And the man who labors for labor's natural reward is still greater than the man who plays to win all the plastic awards in the world. Good night, Benjamin. The gold medal that the Olympian wins is not even solid gold. It's filled with some plastic-like metal that gets dented by his teeth when he chomps down on it before the cameras. So I guess you won't be watching the Olympics next year then, asked Ben. I've never watched them, came the reply. Probably never will. But Grandpa insisted, Ben. You're really missing out. You know who's really missing out? Said the old man, rubbing the gray stubble on his chin thoughtfully. Every family that needs a man and gets a sports hero instead is missing out. And that's more or less how my number one talk went with Grandpa that summer just before he died. That's the talk that convinced me, Benjamin, to relax all of my Olympic-like dreams. Grandpa's lesson was hard to swallow, but what a relief when I finally swallowed it. 
I didn't have to be a sports hero. I just had to be a man.